Thank you so much, Mr. and Mrs. Rayburn, for joining us here. Um, so how did you all find St. Teresa? We moved to the Memorial Park neighborhood in 2003 and found St. Teresa there because we were about a block away and uh, started our journey here at the church ever since then. Yes, we were, what did you find uh, when you came into St. Teresa? How do you describe the feeling of entering this space? It was certainly different then. It was different. And as Ryan said, we were about a block away. So we had most of the time walk here. And it was very welcoming. Um, all our welcome is, is very true in every sense of the word. And loved coming here and felt like it was family and kind of a home um, since 2003. Yeah. Now, were there as many young families there as there are now? Definitely feels like there's more. Um, there's always been a wide variety of generations, but definitely see the youth and um, more families in attendance. Have the reasons that St. Teresa is special to you changed? Well, our lives have changed, right? Going from newlyweds to having three children. So with that, I think we've gotten more integrated into the church. Uh, all three of our children were baptized here. Uh, two of our children have gone through reconciliation and first communion here. Uh, we walked to, to mass for the first two getting baptized. And so I think we just can continue to get further integrated and find that it's deepening our faith and bringing us closer to Jesus. Yeah, so when it's kind of more possible to have people gather, um, even now during the pandemic, people are getting baptized. Um, Mr. Rayburn, if you could speak to, why was that important to your family, that I mean, your family in particular, um, how the children baptize and then start to go through catechesis? I think because we wanted to continue to get closer in our faith and, and uh, be at the center of everything that we did uh, with our family. And it was just a natural extension of who we were and just we felt very at home here. This is Rayburn, anything? Well, it was important for our kids to t continue their journey. So uh, Jude was scheduled to have her communion kind of Right at the end, you know, right at the beginning of that, I think it was early May, and you know, we stopped coming to mass in March, and so for her to continue that journey and make sure that she could come in and, and have that sacrament was really important to us. And the kids have also been wanting to get back into church, and we're looking forward to coming to back faith formation in person too. I guess how has Saint Teresa been there for you during the pandemic? Yeah. I think the way that, that we have, that we have pivoted and made online mass available to both attend, you know, live and streaming on Saturdays and Sundays and both um, rewatch. Um, it's, it's funny, we go on to, to YouTube now and mass is always our top recommended thing when we're, when we're looking. And, um, and so it's something that while we wish we could be in person, um, it's something we get together as a family and get up on the couch and, and watch Mass every week. And it's good to know that the congregation and Father Phil and St. Teresa is here for us. And they'll be here for us when it's, it's safe for all for us to return to Mass in person. Mr. Raver, as you look back over those moments, and these are certainly moments at which um, your experience in Mass changed drastically, like what stands out to you, these moments of sitting together watching Mass? Um, I think all of, um, you know, everything has been different week to week. But for us, I mean, the, the, it, it's just been the, the time together as a family. So whether, we, whether it was here in the church or in our home, that's been the same. So we might not dress the same and we <laughs> might not, our clothes might be a little bit different, but the intention's the same. So I, I think from that standpoint, we very much kind of kept the same pace and same approach to, you know, uh, mass week to week. Yep. Yeah. That had to have comforting. You know? It's very comforting. And I think we're all get together at the time, you know, sometimes we're not ready at 10 a.m. to to really focus and and uh, follow along, listen to mass. So sometimes we have to wait till we're on our time and everybody's ready to 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 focus and be together and really tune in. But it's been very comforting. That we want to hit on this segment in terms of like St. Teresa, your involvement with the parish, especially prior to having children, um, anything related to uh, anything related to the parish and your early journey. Um, so before children, and as we were early parishioners here, we also did our marriage preparation here. So we were able to go through the focus and spend time with Father Phil as we prepared for our uh, journey in marriage. What is 
something about St. Teresa you, you've observed over these 17 years that uh, people wouldn't know when they walked in? For me, I think St. Teresa is, again, we're all are welcome. And when you walk in, you feel at home and there's a sense of peace. It's not intimidating. It it really is a way to be closer to Jesus and to get stronger in your faith. Uh, the, the, par- the parishioners are really um, open in no way, even though we might not know each other's names, you recognize each other. And it's just, um, it's just a place to come and really be vulnerable and grow and um, lean into your faith. I've found that it's just, um, it's unintimidating, it's unassuming. And that's nice. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Rayburn. Um, Mr. Rayburn, I know that um, you all are super busy at this point. Have there been any ways that St. Teresa has called you all out into the community or has encouraged you to do things at home to help your neighbors that you can recall over this time? Gosh, I think we've just tried to do everything we can to be, uh, you know, continue to be part of the community and give in which we can and instill that in our children um, and everything that they're doing and to be mindful and to to keep uh, the same routines that we've had pre-COVID um, so that um, it's just, it's a, it's a way of living and, and, uh, and, and that's what we've continued to do. Yeah, we're trying to be really, still trying to be really safe. Right. So as we as we go out, as we extend what we call kind of our bubble, uh, we just want to make sure that we're protecting ourselves. We're also protecting the community. So being really mindful of social distancing and wearing our mask and um, not doing things that we don't need to do to protect ourselves, but really also to protect those that are most vulnerable. I am so grateful that during the pandemic, during a time when you have had less time, perhaps than ever before, that you made some time for us and you bring yourself there and allowed us to be with you on this set. Please like, subscribe, or comment below.